Today's episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Arden, the Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network. The Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network is an open source project that brings emergency communications into the 21st century. With easily available commercial equipment, you can build a low-cost, high-speed network. Visit the Arden website at www.arden.org for more information. Arden branded equipment labels, embroidered patches, and apparel are available on the website by clicking on the Shop menu button. Can't seem to get these things out on Mondays anymore. Air conditioner. Um. So it's Tuesday. The twenty is it? I don't even know what day it is. The twenty sixth. Tuesday, September twenty sixth. Good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio two point live from the Ham Shack. My name's Jason. I'm KC five HWB. This is episode 113. 113. Um, those of you who watched my State of the Ham Shack episode last week, I actually got quite a bit of feedback and views and whatnot on that episode. I was pleasantly surprised. I was thinking that uh, one guy said, uh, one of my longtime watchers, he's like, man, good to see you back. Figured you were MIA. <laughs> like, well, uh, I'm not missing, but I was in action for sure. I don't want my sign covered up back there too badly. That's better. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been a hot summer. So today, we are going to look at a not a DMR radio. There's there's a concept. We're going to look at the Bridgecom radio today. This is a Bridgecom BCH270. It is a dual band HT. I've not even opened this thing yet. Tape is still on the box. Tim from uh, Bridgecom sent this to me and asked me to review it. And then he said, when you're done with it, if you want to give it away to one of your viewers, you know, that'd be that'd be that was his idea to do. He's like, why don't you do that? Okay. So, I will be giving away this radio to a viewer of this episode. And I think the way I want to do it is... Um, I want to say, if go comment on... Not on the YouTube channel video. But go comment on the website. Go to livefromthehamshack.tv... And it should be, if you're going to go up there right after I post this video, it should be the top video, the one at the, with the largest screenshot there at the very top of the page. But it's episode 113. Click on that episode, and at the bottom of it, there'll be places to comment. It's just a blog site. It's a WordPress blog site is what it is, where I talk about each video. And, um, oh, I got a pen. Bridgecom Systems pen. I'm keeping that. Um, so I talk about the video. Oh, it comes with the, well, I bypass that. It comes with the programming cable. I think the software you can download from bridgecomsystems.com. I'll include the programming cable, of course. Manual. Little thank you note from Tim. It's got his signature down there at the bottom. And, um, anyway, go down there and comment and tell me, I don't know, tell me what you're going to do at the radio. Okay. So, say, I need this radio for X. Tell me what you're going to do with it. And um, after like a week or t maybe 10 days, something like that, I'll go through them and I'll pick one that I think is the most, I don't know, needful, cu cu coolest story. You know, if somebody says, oh, my kid who's 8 years old just got his technician license, he needs a radio, I might pick you. Probably will pick someone like that if someone like that comments. So, there you go. Be really cool to get this in the hands of a very, very new amateur radio operator. So, this is the, this has the feel, very similar feel, to their, to the Bridgecom Systems. Monoband UHF DMR HT. It's got kind of that 
rugged, heavy feel to it, solid feel to it. And I'm just going to say this out loud. Tim from Bridgecom, if you'd be willing to do one like this in a dual band DMR radio, that wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Tim and I talked about that. I did an interview with him from the uh, Green Country Ham Fest in April of this year. <laughs> so I continue to tease him about that. But, uh, oh, it's got a flashlight on top. It's always useful. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at this radio real quick. Huh, there's a flashlight. Woohoo! And I'm going to zoom in on it. We're going to do some power tests on it. And I've got to figure out what, um, how to get in the menu. Well, that was easy enough. It's got two power settings. So it's probably about one watt on low, four to five watts on high per band. So we will look at that here shortly. And I'm not going to look at the software. I'm not going to do that today. But, um... This is a neat little HT. Bridgecom's a really good... Uh, they're out of Kansas City, or just outside of Kansas City. And, um... Really good guys. Heavy in the DMR world. Um... They do a lot of linking systems in both analog and digital. Linking of repeaters. Linking of computer systems to repeaters and across local area networks and across wide area networks. So that got some really cool stuff out there. They've had their hands in the commercial market for some time. They started diving into amateur radio several years back and bringing some of that technology that they used in the commercial market over to the amateur market. So that's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, you can get one of their... Uh, go back and watch that episode. Uh, I don't remember the number, but it's from the Green Country Ham Fest in April of 2017. And he talks about several of his systems where you can link together and have a control panel on your laptop or your tablet, and you can control your repeaters and link this one here and link this one over here, and then you can have a 220 repeater linked to another 220 repeater in another town or another state, and you can talk into the... You can have run the app on the laptop and you can talk into the repeater from any location with an internet connection really cool stuff um maybe maybe something that i will demonstrate on this show one of these days so fingers crossed with that so okay uh so we're going to take a look at this radio here in just one second uh thanks for watching guys if you found me on youtube hit up my website live from the hamshack.tv go find me on Facebook at fb.me forward slash ham radio 2. And then on Instagram and Twitter, I am ham radio, the number 2, D O T, z the number 0. They won't let you put an exclamation or a punctuation point, a period, or a dot in a uh, Twitter name or an Instagram name. So I just used D the word D O T dot spelled out. So ham radio, the number 2, D O T 0. Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, thanks for watching. I said that already, but I do appreciate it. Got quite a bit of hits on that video from last week, and uh, I had some good ideas. Some guys contacted me and says, oh, you should do this, and you should do this. I'm like, oh, that's some good stuff. So might see some of that upcoming on this show in the near future. Next week, I'm probably going to do an all-star node. I got uh, I got my hardware ordered. I'm gonna build be building an All Star node out of an Linko DR235T radio. Actually, I'm gonna build two of them. I'm gonna build a hub node here at the house, build a mobile node to go in the car. And I'll explain all how all that works on that episode. And then in a couple of weeks, I might try to get finished with this one I've been working on for solar panel setup. I mentioned this a while back. I've got a solar panel to put up on the shack and a 170 amp hour battery right there. And I've got a solar charge controller from uh, DIYSolar4U.com. And uh, that's DIY, like do it yourself, and then solar4u.com. 
I think I said on a video a while back that it was the number four instead of four F O R spelt out. I, I was wrong about that. Um, it's so it's D I Y Solar for you dot com spelled the way it should be and um that's their website and they're at dayton every year smaller outfit but uh they got some cool stuff i'm gonna uh be talking to them about possibility of a controller for some of my mobile arden nodes that uh that i'm gonna be putting together so 73 let's take a look at this new ht from bridgecom okay so i programmed a couple of my local repeaters in here and you can uh, we're going in I've got it connected to the dummy load now but I keyed both of these machines these are two machines in grapevine and I keyed both of them from the rubber duck antenna that comes with the the system here something cool I've, I just discovered the battery clip here or the battery clip the uh, the belt clip rather it just kinda slides on you got to slide on, so you don't have to. And here's here's what the clip looks like itself. So you don't have to screw it on. You don't have to worry about missing screws or anything like that. It just slides right on there. So that's really kind of neat. Just like that. A um, couple of weird things I saw in the menu. This is your function button here. This is your VM for. VFO in memory, and then your AB button is down here at the bottom. So in this, when you go into function, Menu. it'll tell you the word, the uh, title of the menu if you wait a few seconds. Okay. Shift, mode. Shift mode, it said. Wide narrow set. It doesn't say anything on that one. It says it on the most common ones. Light set. Light set LED auto. So, how I found the CT the CTCSS. So I don't know what SQT means. It's probably in the manual. I haven't looked at the manual. But I was just going through. I mean, the the menus pretty straightforward really it's got 51 52 actually because zero zero is a setting reverse function Vox now it says receive there um, and when you go in here and hit function and you can change that up and down I just left it to off and you hit function again and it automatically switches to transmit and I've got it 110.9 which is for the repeater here and of course I can change that 110.9 I changed it in here so if I wanted to change this to 254 receive And it automatically changes that for you. If I want to change it to something different, I could do that. Okay. So I've got 254 is receive. Hit function again. Okay. Transmit. Transmits 250.3. Hit function again. Okay. And then it, they're set to two different PL tones for transmit and receive. So what I did was I just turned it off for receive. Okay. And then once you change the receive, it changes the transmit, so you have to go back and change it back. Okay. So receive is off. Transmits on 110.9, which is correct for the repeater. So I'm going to go down here. Power high. Okay. Transmit low power. Let me zoom back with the camera here real quick. Now, this is low power on UHF. Hmm. One and a quarter watts. 
Okay. And go back up here. Okay. Low power on VHF. I just hit the V. There's not really an exit button, so I just hit the V-M button to exit out of the menu. So VHF power, just over one watt. That's good. That's what you'd want to see. Again, we're going into a dummy load. Okay, so I'm going to go to high power. And then this is VHF high power. Four and a quarter watts, that's good. UHF high power. Just over four watts there, too. So there you go. You've got about one watt on low power on both bands, and you got about two, about four watts, just a hair over four watts on both bands. Now, someone had mentioned in a prior video about my, my connector here, which is an adapter to go from the 259 coax into the radio and they said there was going to be some loss with that on UHF. That is correct. There will be loss with that on UHF. Now this is an extremely short jumper. It's like 18 inches I think, maybe 20 inches, this jumper here. And we're just going into a dummy load which there's a jumper on the back of that too which is about 3 feet. So the loss factor is really quite minimum. But yeah, you'll have more loss on UHF than you will on VHF when you're adding jumpers and adapters and connectors to the mix. That is true. Um, I just use the connector because every radio I review, I review mobile radios and it uses that connector. I review HTs and sometimes they're SMA male, sometimes they're SMA female. They're never the same thing. And I don't have jumpers with all those ends on them. But... Um, that is that's a pretty accurate and, it, and 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 this meter right here might vary a little bit also this is a brand new mfj meter it's the uh model uh mfj 849 i've used it in several videos now uh if you guys have seen that the only thing i don't like about it so far is the fact that it requires power um the old mfj meter that I used, which was, it's sitting right back here, it's an MFJ873, it was just an analog needle, it didn't require any power, I didn't have to plug it in, but with this one, I have to plug it into my power supply, you see it flicker in there, I've got it plugged in, in this power supply, and I don't have a permanent plug on it, that's why it's flickering when I move it around, um, so you need power for it, uh, to light up the screen like that. I've also got my bird watt meter back here and for some of the HF stuff I've done or some of the more high power stuff I've done I use the bird watt meter. I might switch to the bird watt meter on a more regular basis soon but right now I'm really liking this. MFJ was kind enough to send this to me so I wanted to use it in several videos. It is a good meter. I do like it. I compared it with my other two meters and all three of them are pretty much right on par with one another. Uh, I don't have any calibration tools here or anything like that, but I compare it to meters that I've compared to other meters. And, you know, as long as they're within like a 5% variance, you know, I think that's pretty darn good for amateur radio usage anyway. If we were talking about something that was supposed to do 1,500, kilowatt, 1500 watts, 1.5 kilowatts, then I'd be more concerned about it. But for what I'm doing, this is great. And this meter is, it's got a huge screen. Lights up, tells you a bunch of different information. It's a good meter. So, I don't know if we can raise anyone on the repeater or not. 440 machine. This is my favorite 440 machine in this area. I hesitate to say it's my favorite 440 machine because it's a fusion machine. And back when it was a Motorola machine, it got better coverage. But it doesn't do too bad for what it is now. No one ever uses it on digital. It's an analog machine. They have it running in AMS, but I never hear any digital on it. If I'm driving around town in the car, this is the repeater that I have programmed into my 
uh, mobile radio. It's one of the NetArk repeaters, and it's 443.875. You've seen me key this repeater several times. KC5HWB. That's for those of you who think I should have ID'd when I kerchunked the repeater just then. And you're not wrong. I should have. Um, but that's the repeater I'm on when I'm driving around town if I'm in the mobile at home. And I'm going to do an up upcoming episode where I'm going to put a new antenna on the roof of my house that I will then run feed line down into my office inside of the house. And I've got an old Kenwood uh, Tri-Band TM741A with 2 meters, 220, and 440 in it. Really love that radio. I wish Kenwood would re-release it in a new version. But um, I'm going to run that and a DMR radio of some sort. I don't know which one yet. So I'm going to do an episode on setting that up and putting that together. And then after that, I'll have it on all the time because usually when I'm not in the shack, I'm in the office of the house doing stuff on the computer, the website, and whatnot. All of my video editing software is up there on that computer. So KC5 HWB for a radio check if anyone's listening. wonder if Jim's out there. He might be. Maybe not. Uh, this two-meter machine gets monitored very infrequently. KC5HWB testing. No, I can't, I can't hit the two-meter from down here. It doesn't have as good a coverage. It's not up as high as the 440 machine is. There it is. There's more scratch to it. It's not. It's just not up as high as the 440 machine is. Um, it's also a fusion repeater. So, KC5HWB test one two three. So, anyway, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not every radio I've ever tested in this shack um, will hit that 440 machine, which is right there. It's actually about probably three, three and a half miles from me as a crow flies. It's up at the north end of DF DFW Airport, so it's up kind of high. And um, it's got really good coverage, but I can't always hit it from an HT inside of the shack. Some of the HTs I review out here that I'm like, man, the receiver on this radio must not be as good, or it may not be getting out as well because... Um, for whatever reason, um, it's probably just not a not as quality of a radio as what I'm used to. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, it, let's see if somebody's out there that I could text and get to get on the repeater. But anyway, from what I have, I've actually not done a QSO on this radio yet. I would like to. Let's see if Kent's out there. But, um, KC5HWB test. Let's see, there's no scratch coming back. That's really good signal coming from that repeater into this radio. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that radio. I think it'll be a good HT for somebody, perhaps somebody with a new license. And hopefully we can give it away. I didn't, I, uh, one thing I did not mention earlier... Whoever I decide to give it to, I'll just ship it to you for. There's not gonna, I'm not gonna charge you shipping, shipping or anything. 
I'll just drop it in a USPS priority mail envelope or box and uh, ship it to you that way. As long as you're in the United States. If you're in Canada, we'll have to work out something else. But because uh, shipping to Canada is pricey. So, I said one sec, maybe he'll be there in a minute. So, yeah, I got some cool stuff upcoming, though. Uh, the the All-Star nodes and some Arden node setups and some uh, KC5HWB. There he is right there. All right, man, I appreciate it. I'm testing a new radio. Just wondered uh, how it sounded in the repeater. I hear that same thing. You know, it's probably me. It is an HT radio, and I'm sitting in my shack inside uh, in the backyard, of course. But um, so I, that bacon frying could be on my end. Well, I've heard you on several AT, HT sitting in your shack, and, and uh, he has, very that's true. few of them sound as good as that one sitting in there. There you go. <laughs> okay, great. Good deal. I appreciate it, man. Um, I threw my call sign out two or three times, and nobody was monitoring, apparently. But I just wanted to get um, get a test done on it. So this is the new Bridgecom. I say it's new. It's been out a few months. It's a Bridgecom dual band HT from those guys out of Kansas City area. Um, they asked me to review it, and I just wanted to see how it sounded. Okay, good. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning over here. Uh, probably going to be doing an episode on All Star next week, so I may hit you up again for that uh, to do some testing on that as well. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I've been doing some uh, reprogramming on my uh, node, uh, working on the audio quality a little bit. So yeah, let me know. I'm, uh, I'll be on. Okay, I got my uh, my rim connectors in. Uh, they make one. The, the rim Max Track is the one that Rod Rod's friend James he was talking about a rim Max Track. The rim, the complete rim cable is the one you put between two radios to make a repeater. But they make one called an, a rim Alenco, and it plugs right into the back of an Alenco radio, a DB9 connector. So I got a couple of those for the two uh, two twenty Alencos I've got. And I'm going to be putting those together probably here in the next few days. Look at you building a 220 repeater. Love <laughs> it. Well, <laughs> well, I'm going to do that also, but these two are going to be separate nodes. One's going to go in the car and one's going to stay in the house. They're going to be simplex nodes. And then uh, as soon as I get a hold of a couple of those 220 Motorola radios, I'll get another rim cable, and I'm probably going to build an all-star repeater out of that, although I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it yet. Oh, well, that's neat stuff. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, I got an antenna up and geared at the house on my all-star node. Of course, it doesn't put out a... Well, I take that back. I've got it hooked to my 8900 right now, so uh, I can put out up to 50 watts. But, uh, I mean, I can be uh, several miles away, even with the antenna in the house, and uh, get into it with my mobile. So I've been doing that here lately. KC5HWB. Okay. Yeah, I've not done that with mine yet, but that's uh, that's the plan. That's what I'm going to put together and put up here at the house so I can do just exactly that. Um, so, all right, man, I'll let you go. Thanks for hopping in there, and uh, I'll, I'll yell at you here a little bit later. All right, man, good talking to 
and 7-3. We'll talk to you here in a little bit. Uh, I see kids poking their heads out, <laughs> waving to me, so I'm going to go see what they're into. WK5YXS. All right, man. Sounds good. I'll talk to you in a bit. KC5 HWB. So there you go. Confirmed audio quality of the Bridgecom BCH270 radio. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm kind of excited about that all-star stuff. Kent and I have been working on that for a while. Another buddy of mine, Rod, KD5 HQF, he's... Uh, got a mobile node running in his truck that he drives and a couple other guys have helped me on that so I've got all my stuff together to try to or to not try to actually do an all put together an all star node on the show put it on the air and see how it works and uh, demonstrate that so 73 that's probably what we're going we're gonna to be doing next week probably unless something changes so see how much time I have between now and then 73 guys thanks for watching and um, we'll see you next week This has been Ham Radio 2.0, a YouTube production by KC5HWB. Visit our website at www.livefromthehamshack.tv. Please also stop by our Facebook page at fb.me slash hamradio2. Be sure and subscribe here on YouTube to keep up with all the new videos that are posted nearly every Monday. 73 is everyone, and thanks for watching.